Hello, Altered Seago here, and uh, I'm basically doing a little bit of a follow-up on my previous post regarding uh, using mech builds against Protoss. And uh, part of what makes a good build is kind of knowing what your opponent is going to do to counter it, and then what you can easily transition into to counter that. Uh, you have to be able to anticipate the response to whatever build you're going to put out there. And with that particular build, as I mentioned in the original video, carriers are the answer. And what I'm going to do here real quickly is show you the uh, StarCraft website. And the reason I'm doing this is because I have an issue with what they're saying on here. So you can see here, Races Protoss, and I'm going to scroll down, and you're going to see I'm going to select the carrier. And we're going to select the carrier, give it a second, and you see here, Strong Against Thor, which is what we're using in that bit particular build, and weak against Viking. And I have a little bit of an issue with this, and uh, you know, I guess I kind of wanted to cover this since I had suggested that people try that build. So we're going to just jump in the game real quickly, and uh, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. All right, so through the magic of technology, we're already in game. And uh, what I'm using here is a unit tester that was created by X-Dragon, and I'll try to put the link in uh, the... Uh, description below this video so that you can download it if you want. It's actually a really really cool uh, tool if you're having issues with a particular unit is uh, for finding different ways to micro your units so they're more effective against the enemy or uh, for determining what units are really effective against your enemy units because uh, you know, it'll give you the cost so you can see is this a good uh, cost trade-off or and then it also shows you this uh, supply and you know you can real quickly throw down buildings and you know do all sorts of different tests and in some of my subsequent videos I'll use this a lot to kind of show off uh, how you can use different units more effectively against uh, your opponent's units so um, and like I said thank you X Dragon great great thing you know to have this uh, to test with and as you can see here we have uh, you can test out in different scenarios and what we're going to do is we'll just do the ramp because I think it gives us the most room and we'll give the left player who will be Terran uh, some Viking and we'll give him eight Viking because that seems about right and we'll give the right player who will be Protoss uh, we'll give them some carriers so let's see mm. Let's do that, and then we'll give the left a couple more too, to kind of even this out a bit. So go back, turn Viking. There we go. So you can see we're spending a lot more on uh, in mineral, 300 extra mineral, but we're saving 75 gas, and the supplies are even, 1818. And per Blizzard's instructions, we're going to use this uh, this particular combination. Uh, against each other. Now I'm going to point out that I did give the uh, carriers the Graviton launcher so that they can uh, get their units out very quickly and I think any good Protoss player would get that pretty you know as quickly as they could just simply because it makes these carriers much more useful. So you're gonna see here we have our carriers in a nice line and we're going to tell them to go ahead and auto build all of their uh, interceptors. Now, I should point out that this is part of what makes carriers really, really powerful. Their interceptors are kind of like marines uh, with more armor and, uh, you know, a solar firing rate, because right? I think their fire rate is three, but they get two shots at five damage each instead of the six, and um, they can hold, uh, you know, eight interceptors. So, for six supply, you're basically getting kind of like eight flying marines, uh, more or less, and they get have 40 shields and 40 health, and they're pretty powerful. And over here we have our Viking, and uh, we have nine of them, and we're going to tell them to go after these carriers. Now, the one th one thing with carriers, because the actual carrier does not fire anything at the enemy unit, you have to constantly sit there and click and tell these Viking to attack that carrier. Otherwise, they're going to sit there and try to shoot interceptors all day. Uh, and you'll hear me going, clicking like crazy, trying to get them to do that. So, uh, we're going to get our nice little Viking here, and they're in a nice little formation, and we're going to tell them to target this guy. 
And you're going to see he goes down pretty quick, and we're going to fire at him. But our, you notice our Viking numbers are dwindling. And I think this carrier is going to survive. Yep. So, carrier lives, have 70 hit points. Now, the Protoss can't repair that, but his shields are going to come back. And so, really, because, like I was saying, we're spending 300 extra mineral. Now, we're saving 75 gas. This really is not the best trade-off for us. Um, despite what Blizzard's website says, do not go Viking against carrier unless you absolutely have to. Uh, if you don't happen to have the building for battle cruisers or something, then I guess you're kind of stuck. But if you have the time, build the battle cruisers. So we're going to build three battle cruisers, and we're going to give the right the same three carriers. And we're going to see. Oops, wrong race. All right, carrier, three carriers. All right, start, and we're going to auto cast these bad boys. And because there's no terrain to worry about, we don't have to, you know, worry about setting up anything where they're. Uh, in a particular location or something like that. So, this is of course slightly more expensive. Um, it ends up being more expensive for us, but it's far more effective. Uh, it costs more gas, of course, um, but even without the Yamamoto cannon, which is a nice upgrade if you're going against carriers because you can just Yamamoto those suckers down. Um, these battle cruisers just do so much damage against the air, and they have so much armor. So we're going to see here. We have our three battle cruisers, and we're of course once again going to tell them to attack the carriers. Now they do have a really fi fast fire rate, and they do a lot of damage, so they can shoot down the interceptors pretty effectively. But if you kill the carrier, it's you know cutting the head off the snake. You can get rid of them, and you get rid of the interceptors that way. So we're going to send our battle cruisers at these carriers, and we're going to target fire them. And Say ignore the stupid interceptor, and you're going to see we're just chewing through this uh, carrier, you know. And our bow cruiser, of course, is taking damage, but we can of course repair this. So this isn't a you know a terrible thing. And we're going to go ahead and micro him out. If we can't. Oh, I couldn't get him out. Darn it. Those interceptors have a really long range, but you can see we're going to take out three carriers and our our uh, battle cruisers are pretty good as far as health they've got a uh, you know 406 out of 550 and uh, really if I had pulled that other one back sooner uh, because you know he wasn't firing on that last one anyways if I had pulled him back a little bit more quickly we could have saved him and then repaired him and this would have been a lot better trade-off for us so if you do happen to get a Protoss player that actually knows the correct counter for that mech build, and they do go carriers, don't go Viking. Go battle cruisers. So that's all I have for today, and uh, thanks for listening. So good day, and uh, good gaming.